We all want that compression like the tour players, but in order to get it, we have to get the hands in front of the golf ball at impact. Those of you who really struggle with that scoopy impact, you're coming in with wrist angles that are like this. The lead, the lead wrist is kind of cupping, and that trail wrist has that flat position. Well, you're doing that as a means to square up the face, right? So if I took those same wrist angles and I got my hands forward, well, my club face would be wide open, which is why we have to change our wrist angles in order to make that happen. We have to turn this wrist, we have to kind of bow this wrist, twist this wrist down. The trail wrist needs to be more in a bent back position at impact. Now I have one drill for you that's gonna have one move that's gonna incorporate getting those hands forward and then also getting those proper wrist angles so that way we're squaring up the face too. We're not hitting it a mile to the right because you're not gonna do that for very long. You hit a couple balls straight to the right, you're gonna go right back uh, to scooping the ball like you were before just to hit it straight, which would be much better but we want to have the best of both worlds. We want to get that forward shaft link compression. We also want to be striping it right down the middle as well. So what we want to do is we want to have this sensation. You probably notice I got this noodle sitting here. And to set up this noodle, you can use a wall or a noodle, but you, if you're using a noodle, uh, just set it up to where it's kind of right down your toe line here and then right outside your lead foot. And what we want to do is we want to have this sensation here that if, we're, if I'm addressing this golf ball right here, that I'm coming in and I'm getting my, my, basically my watch face here to be on this noodle before the club gets to the golf ball. And what that does is that one gets my hands in front of the golf ball and also feel the feeling of this part of my wrist getting to the noodle helps me have those wrist angles. Because if I had those same kind of scoopy wrist angles, well, my knuckles would be getting on the noodle first. And what's really cool about this is this feeling of getting to that position right there, getting my watch face on there before it gets to the golf ball, naturally makes me do a lot of things. One, it naturally makes me shift my weight to my lead side. If I hang back on my, on my trail side, I can't get to that noodle, right? I can't get to it at all. So I've gotta shift, make sure I get my weight shifting to my lead side. It also makes me open up my body. If I keep my body kind of closed off, my hips closed off, it's very difficult for me to get my, you know, to get the, the wrist to the noodle without getting the club to the golf ball. I'm gonna naturally wanna open up my body and get to that. The other thing that it does is it makes me bow, bow that lead wrist, right? It makes me get that wrist bowing because if I don't, I'm gonna hit my knuckles on there, which is really important. And it also makes me get my hands low. If I don't get my hands low, then I'm not gonna get, if, imagine I was doing all those things, but my hands were really high. So I shifted my weight, I opened my body, but my hands were very high. Well, I'm not gonna get to the golf ball, right? I'm swinging above the golf ball. So I've gotta get low to the ground in, our, in order to make that ha happen. In order to get my, that part of my wrist on that noodle, I've gotta get my hands really, really low and make that happen. Now, this is an exaggeration. This isn't, you know, unless you're trying to hit like a punch out really, really low, you wouldn't actually want to swing this way. But when you're someone who goes like this, you need to feel these exaggerations to get even close to what the tour players are looking like, all right? So if you got that little early release, scoopy release, I recommend exaggerating this feeling as much as you can. So like I said, you can use a noodle, you can use a wall. And what I want you to do is I just want you to do some reps where you're coming in and get that feeling of getting to the ground, uh, getting those hands in front, getting that face squared up and getting that part of your hand on there as well. Now I'm a big advocate of working on things at home as well. And that's why I have this remote here so I can demonstrate how you could work on this at home. You know, you don't have to have a club or anything like that. Just pretend like this is a wall. You're watching the news or, or your favorite TV program and you can practice the same thing. I just wanna grab that remote and I wanna get that same feeling that I'm coming, I'm getting really low, I'm shifting my weight. I'm getting that same feeling. So get in lots of reps at home. The more, the better. It's gonna help you to translate it out to the range. You're gonna get that work done at home. So that way you're not, you know, you're not spending that time at the range doing that. You can get right into hitting some really low stinger type shots. All right, so now that we have this feeling, uh, and we'll go ahead and move these out of the way. All right, so now that we have these, uh, our, our things out of the way, now you don't actually wanna hit balls with, that, with the wall or noodle there. But once you get that sensation, that feeling there, you want to have, you know, you basically want to pretend like that wall is there. And what a good feeling to have is to imagine like that club head really never gets to that wall. This is another crazy exaggerated feeling. Not actually what would happen in the swing, but you want to feel like your wrist is coming in like this. It's touching that wall and the club head never ever gets to the wall. So basically your wrist kind of runs up the wall and the club head never ever gets up to the wall. 
So you know, it would look something like this, like you're coming in and you got the hands forward, and I'm crazy exaggerating here, but you're feeling like that's basically happening, like the, the club never passes the hands. This isn't actually what's going to happen, but that's the feeling that you wanna have to get that release like we see all the tour players here. So I got a seven iron here, and I'm gonna try and get that same feeling, try to hit like a really low piercing shot here, getting that same feeling. You know, I've done my drills, I've gotten, you know, I've done the hundreds of reps at home, watching the news, I'm getting that, that feeling, getting that risk, getting that feeling out in front. And that's gonna help me, to, like I said, to open up my body, to get everything working in the right way. And I'm gonna feel like in this swing, when I'm coming through contact, that I'm like that. You know, that's what I'm gonna feel like. That's not what it's gonna look like, but that's what's gonna feel like to me in my mind. And hopefully I can get a nice piercing, low, you know, wind penetrating ball flight, uh, and we'll see, see how that looks. All right, so I don't think I've ever really hit a seven iron quite that long. 190, that's a really long seven iron for me. Launched at 15 or so degrees, which is you know a couple degrees lower than what you're gonna see the tour player. So I'm really happy with that. For any of this to work, we have to be getting this club to shallow out in the start of the downswing. If we get that club coming down steep, well, you're just not gonna be able to get to that one move spot because in order to hit a good golf shot, you're gonna to have to stand up. And when you stand up, the hands get high, like we talked about earlier, and you're gonna to have to flip the club to get to the golf ball in order to hit a functional golf shot. Otherwise, you're gonna miss the golf ball. You know, if you came in and you got your hand on there, you would miss the golf ball completely. You'd be swinging on playing in all that stuff and you'd have forward shaft lean, but it doesn't do you a lot of good if you're missing the golf ball. So what, you, what we have to do is we have to get this club shallowed out initially, and that's gonna allow you to open up the body and because if you, if you come down steep and you open up the body, look, you're over the top. If you come down steep and you get the club on plane, you have to stand up. So you're just not in a good position there when you're coming down steep initially. We have to get that club shallowing out. And this is what we call the anti-roll method at Top Speed Golf. The founder of Top Speed Golf, Clay Ballard, is going to go over a preview of a great drill from the anti-roll method to get you started on getting that club shallowed out and also getting those proper wrist angles that we talked about as well. So if you want to stick around and watch that video, I'm going to show a preview of that. But if you'd like to watch the whole video, all you have to do is click the i-card that's going to show up um, at the top of the screen, or you can click below the video in the link in the description. Play well. Talk to you soon. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strike. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this, there's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, You'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there...